Welcome to Soft Bites Podcast, your life, your dentistry. We talk about ways to have more fun and meaning in one of the coolest and most rewarding professions in medicine. Conversations on how to bring awareness, create a healthy workplace, and provide emotional insights to make dentistry a fulfilling activity while making space for one's wonder, creativity, and freedom. Here are your hosts, Banuela and George Andre. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Soft Bites podcast. Hello, Andre. How are you? How are well. you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good and relaxed. Feeling good and relaxed. And you? I just took uh, a month off, right? Something yeah, not, like that. Not completely off, but I, I had to maintain certain certain meetings that I already had scheduled. But uh, but yeah, I just I was able to disconnect uh, from social media. I was able to take nice. Uh, I, I I was able to disconnect, so it was it was really it was really good, it was really good. And you working, working, working? Yes, I've been. Uh, I am. Um, I've been quite busy. I I don't feel tired, honestly, but because I've been um, I've been taking very good care of myself. I've been priori- prioritizing sleep, nutrition, exercise. But I've been quite busy. I've been uh, I've been quite busy. Yeah. But um, I'll, but by the end of the year, I, I'll have uh, a, comp- a full month off, and I also have some some travels in between that I that I that I will uh, will relax. And also, I a, a big burden has has lift from my my shoulders because I had uh, uh, I was a speaker in a meeting that was that was quite stressful. Let's say it. And uh, after that, I feel like really. Pr- Pretty relaxed, honestly. Uh, uh, I can't complain, honestly. I can't complain. We are going to talk to about positive things today. Do yes. you think that that develop the the capacity of us developing this positive feelings? Because I, I believe that this is a practice, a training. Well, of Do you course. think that also contributes for for that sense of uh, yes. of 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 not feeling tired? For example, yeah. uh, uh, because when you have a busy day, and if you fuel negative emotions, I think that will yeah. contribute for you to feel more uh, exhausted and disconnected, even from from yourself and from the environment. Yeah, but, um, oh. but if you if you cultivate more positive feelings, does that have a, a positive inf- uh, effect sure. on you also? I'm going to use uh, something that you use quite often. I mean, it, it, it needs to be intentional, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you have to be aware. Uh, for example, let me... I, uh, um, I was... I, I felt a little bit tired last week because I had to drive to the north of Spain to give a lecture. And I was a little bit tired. I was not... Uh, I was like... Uh, don't really feel like going, you know. Um, but uh, the reason I w- why I was like that was because I had just had uh, some, some some stuff to deal at work, you know. Um, so uh, if if I, I think that if you are aware of your own feelings and if you look back at the day exactly what were the things that happened that made you feel like that, you'll most of the times you'll find the reason maybe. Uh, you had some argument with someone or maybe you just didn't sleep that much or maybe something happened that you weren't... I mean, and, and if you are aware of those things, I think just, just looking at those from a distant point of view or from an independent point of view, that will immediately make you feel better. So I arrived there a little bit late. I didn't sleep that much that day. But I woke up in the morning. I went for a run. I went for some exercises near, near, some exercises near the ocean, near the beach. And, um, and and things change. So I, I think that uh, sometimes you are uh, in the just in the middle of the the daily storm, right? And and it's difficult for you to disconnect because you are just not aware of how of of what what you are feeling and how you are feeling. So and and I think that. Uh, you can't not you can't just do the transition. I mean, if you're feeling anxious or tired or just in a bad mood, you cannot just click and turn yourself into positive emotions. I think you have to first of all, I think the most important thing is what you say is that you have to stop. Okay, what is going on inside me actually? Okay, so this is what's going on. Okay, 
So I cannot just go from one mood to the other. I need, I know that. So, so this is what happened. I am, uh, uh, I'm becoming anxious because of this and this and this. Okay. So let's just focus on the moment. Just let's just enjoy the ride for a moment and just let things go. And, and I think that before you go into immediately to the positive part, you have to let things go or at least be aware of that. It, 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 it doesn't need to take many days. I mean, you can do this in a couple of hours. But I think that you just have to stop and realize, okay, so this is why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling. Okay, so how can I just relax and and place things into perspective and uh, just focus on the good things around and you'll always find good things around. Uh, whether people around you or other situations or things that you are doing. But I think that, that you have to be aware, first of all, and then you have to be intentional, yeah? Yeah, but that's a practice. That's yeah, that, sorry. That, yeah. that was a long mm-hmm. answer for a no, short no, but, answer. No, but, but yeah, it, it is right. a practice. It is a practice. It's just something that you practice, just like meditation, just like exercise, yeah. just like willpower. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about this: how we can develop a genuine desire to see others win. So how we can feel real joy. Uh, when we see others uh, f- success, uh, yeah. and I was, uh, and you suggested this uh, this theme, and I wanted to ask you how, why did you you suggested this? Uh, yeah. Where this this came from? So I think this is this is something that I struggle within myself. I think since ever, right? Because. Think- um, Everyone, I, I, when yeah. I was thinking about it, I, I think everyone does. Yeah. So b- because we have this internal struggle, right? Because we we have this we have this need to survive and to be liked, and to feel accomplished, right? And to feel special. Um, but but um, I think and and I I suggested this, I suggested this before. I saw something from Phil Stutz in um, in a podcast with Rich Roll, and Phil Stutz he said something that was really nice, which was um, uh, in in the he, he, human beings have this need to be feel special, and that can be money, recognition. I mean, it, there's a whole lot of lot of things that make the individual feel special, but that will never be enough. If that is not balanced with the um, contribution for the group, the feeling that you are contributing for the group, and 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 those they seem they seem um, they seem opposite, and they are in a sense they are they are opposite in a, in a sense. But he was telling that y- you can't just have one or the other. You need to have both, and you need to have them balanced. And he was uh, he was quoting a guy called uh, I think it was Rudolf Steiner that um, and the way that you do that the way that you do that is through sacrifice and he was talking about our concept I mean, even in in my Instagram I have it I, I've placed this I posted that last week because I really felt that was so special and he, he was telling that he that this guy uh, Steiner he said that this is fundamental. You need to have both of them. You cannot only have one. And um, and the way to be able to uh, develop the, the 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 capacity to contribute for the group, because let's let's be honest. Initially, your most primitive. Uh, I mean, your instinct is your instinct, to. Yeah. Is to help yourself, right? Is to to focus on yourself, and he said that the only way that you can balance this this focus on on yourself and on the others is through sacrifice. And it's it seems a little bit violent, but but it but it is true. You have to you have to um, many times the things that you have to do it may feel like sacrifice, and and in a certain extent, in a certain extent that they that they certainly will. I mean. In relationships, in 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 group dynamics, in businesses, you have to sacrifice. You you have to, in a sense, sacrifice yourself. 
But I think that, that the word was was used in a, in a, in a positive way. So, I mean, so the way I understand that that you need to sacrifice yourself is that you need to be intentional about it. And this is why I think that uh, the title of this podcast is training yourself to. Because I don't think it comes natural. I don't think it is something that comes to you naturally. It, of course, it also depends on your education. It depends on many things. But I think that uh, you, you, ha you, we always, we all have a desire to prove ourselves in the in this world, right? And the recognition of the others. I mean, it, it, it's important that um, the need to feed your own ego, whether it's money or recognition or whatever. And, and I think that comes first. And the other part of, uh, of understanding that there's only one way of, of, uh, of making sense of that is to have that balance with the well-being of the group around you. Uh, and that can be a journey which is rational. I mean, you can learn about that. You can read it. You can say, well, actually, this makes sense. It's the way that we were wired. Uh, that's one way. The other way is to really have a lot of success and then feel miserable about that, right? I, I've, I've never been like that, honestly. I've, I, I think I, I've never uh, had that point where I felt that I was successful to the point and, and, and empty at the same time. But I think it's, uh, especially if you are very famous or extremely successful in, in your field and, and and really, really well known and and very popular. I mean, like uh, I don't know, maybe a, a popular singer or a popular artist. I think it can really be devastating, and you can really um, re uh, come to a point that you that you eventually believe that actually none of that makes sense because you feel very lonely. And it's true. I mean, if if you focus on your own success only you will feel very lonely and at the end of the day we, we are humans and we need recognition of others and we need to contribute to others <clears throat> and we feel very empty. So I think that whatever the path that takes you to this realization that the well-being of people around you is as important as your own well-being, uh, wh wh whatever the path it is, whether it's more rational or more extreme like uh just like like a big crisis that forces you to to, to look at other people i think uh it, it doesn't happen by accident you know uh, maybe if you are uh, educated and your 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 bringing up is with perfect parenting or in a very i don't know on a very perfect environment maybe you you grow up uh into thinking this way and that might probably be possible but i think that mo for most of us we still need to prove ourselves i mean just to on at least on the on the western world just to get educated go to college or have a job or whatever or get married or or have kids or make money or wh whatever that is or be, su be successful um so um so yeah that's it that's that's how the Gee. The, you, the, the idea came up. Yeah. Do you think that in the industry, um, the, sometimes it's hard for, for us to be happy for other colleagues because there's a lot of comparison, you know, and yeah. with that, and that comparison brings, uh, kind of jealousy. Yeah, sure. 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 Um, I, I think dentistry is is not the only field where this happens i mean this is this happens especially now with social media right um i mean that there's comparison in dentistry we, we've spoken about this many times we have this there's a lot we we don't we were not trained to work as a team in 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 in, in dental school and also because it's a um, profession that is highly we connected not, to private it's it's yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but I think this connects with what you are saying. I think that we are not used to see the greater good for the community, like you yes. said. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, it, yeah. We are not used. No one teaches to see uh, that that yeah. your actions will have 
can have an, an impact not only for you but for the the community uh, yeah. uh, of dentistry. I don't think that that the dentistry and dentists think like think like that on the impact that they can have yeah. on the on the community, because just of, like you said. Yeah, I, I think that overall, it's that there's like um, there there is a lack of uh, of skills of emotional intelligence. Because we are not we are not taught about that. I mean, we may be curious and we may find for ourselves and looking to courses and read books, but this is this is not something that is part of of curriculum. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I was I was telling that the fact that dentistry is highly yeah. is mainly a private practice. It's very connected to aesthetics, okay. and that marketing is very connected to the image. Um, Yes, I think there's some some uh, and and also the industry is a is a mixture of medicine and engineering and aesthetics and the communication and marketing and so on. So this creates a, a melting pot that we all know, where jealousy and um, and individualism and competition can can really rise. I, I'm sure it's not the only, but. Um, also, because it's very there are a lot of dentists, right? In, in not in most countries, but in many countries, there's a lot of dentists. This creates this creates competition, and uh, and yes, I think that um, the profession itself is not mature enough to to see the good in uh, in um, in seeing people around you thrive. I think it is. Uh, I think. I think it's it's one of the reasons, yes, and I think in dentistry that this happens. I think Very this good. happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I I have to say that um, I I totally uh, agree with you. This for you to be able to um, to make this this analysis about yourself, about uh, uh, if 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 you are able to really uh, make this analysis of uh, how do you feel when you see uh, others uh, success uh, how do you yeah. how do you really feel with that so for you to be able to make that that analysis you you have to 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 start developing that self awareness you have to be really uh, aware of what's going on inside for me when i uh, i can tell you that i was thinking about our conversation today and i went back and i i remember that there was a time that I made it intentional during my day to see if I spend more time comparing myself to others or celebrating others, you know, and that's and I, I use this mantra that I still use yeah, nowadays that's, that's when so I cool. caught myself there that on, on that position, which is celebration over comparison. Um, That's so but cool. I, but I had to be very intentional about this. Yes, But when exactly. I started making this analysis, I realized that I spent all my time comparing, 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 comparing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I realized... We all do that. And, but it's interesting because I realized that it was because... And it's of course, it's always about us. We are very selfish. It's, it's all about our ego. But I realized that I was focused... On, on the on the impact of uh, of of those uh, that good news or or whatever it was that the the impact that had on me. So I was not focused on that person's actions or on that person's uh, success or or winning, but I was focused on the impact that that had on me. Do do do, we, do you understand what I what yes, I'm saying? Yes, of course, of course. So and that was what called it causing? it's a it's a it's a survival instinct i mean yeah. how will mm -hmm. this affect me more yeah, than how yeah, will this yeah, affect yeah. the and others and what does yeah. this say about me that i'm not enough yeah. that i'm not uh, yeah. doing enough that will i be able to, to yeah. do it so what does that say about uh, uh, about me or what or even what other people would will say about me because i i am i'm i was not the one so, yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so. But in order for yeah. me not to be, to not to go on those on that spiral of thoughts, because if you are really mindful about your thoughts, you are able to 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 you know to stop them and to go. Okay, don't go there because that's just fantasy. But uh, I 
I, 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 for me, it works very well when I, um, when I have these patterns of, of, of thoughts and I want to, to change something, it works very well to have these mantras, you know. So on this situation, I use this mantra, okay, celebration over comparison and, uh, and to, to, to be able to, to, instead of focusing on myself, to be able to focus on, 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 on the other, on I the think other that's person. Very interesting. But I, think I, I never, I never thought about that. But I think this is so so nice celebration over comparison. I, and I think this actually should be the subtitle of this podcast. What do you think? I think it's very nice. Okay. Uh, well, do you know what I did? What, what I did is uh, there was a time in my life where I would, um, I would have uh, uh, a motto which would be a daily motto which would be, "You're forbidden to." Th think negatively about uh, anyone. So whenever you find yourself thinking negative things about someone, you just reframe that and you look at that objective and, and, and you just realize that that was a consequence of something. That mm -hmm. reaction was a consequence of some, of something. Maybe it's insecurity. Maybe, maybe you are just being selfish. Maybe you are just not analyzing things as they should be. Maybe you are just yeah. judging. Maybe you are just judging, exactly. Which you... out, out of insecurity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's that thing that, there's the, that thing that says that comparison is the thief of joy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. another thing that helps uh, in, in the comparison is that, um, <laughs> and this is, this is something that really works very nicely. Especially, I, I think that with with time, you 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 tend not to compare yourself too much. But I think that um, in the early years of your career, you still need to prove yourself something. And I think that um, whenever you compare yourself, one thing that works very nicely is to say, "Okay, would I really like to change my whole life or the life of that person?" just because they have this particular thing that make me feel jealous about them. I mean, would you like to have their relationship with their spouse or, or whatever? Is it something that you would like to have? Would you like to have their um, lack of time? Would you w like to have their uh, holidays or would you like to have their group of friends? Wouldn't you prefer the situation that you have now? So basically, your life and you're is much better than the one that you are comparison because if you look at the, the at the grand scheme of things so sometimes we compare our dental success to a specific person dental success which actually means very very little right and it might be very important or it might not be very important to you but then if you look at that person life and lifestyle and um, and people that surround them then you realize, no, actually, I, 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 I would not change my life for that small uh, area of, of, of professional success. So if you look at things this way, it's very easy to, to understand that actually the way that we compare ourselves to each other is, is, is really silly, you know. Um, it's um, sometimes it's just a, a, a complete waste of time, and, and people don't think about like you were saying that you were focusing too much on yourself, or, or, or when when someone when something in someone else was was uh, was happening, and uh, this is also because we focus to we we tend to overestimate the amount of time that people think about us and most of the time people don't care don't don't really think about us because they are just uh, um, they are just too much focus on their own on their own things isn't it but um, but yes it's it's uh, it's at the end of the day what we are discussing here is things to be aware stop think and 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 get out of the of the the that whirlwind of, of, of thoughts and, and just do something intentional about that and just have a more conscious interpretation of the things that are going on. Because at most of the times we are just being 
to emotional uh, and and being caught by our emotions. Yeah. And you know another thing that uh, it helped me, uh, and 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 I think this is very helpful also, and it's part of of any uh, emotional intelligence training. Is I remember that when I started, you know, to be self aware that I was comparing myself to others, I remember saying to myself, oh, but, uh, I'm not a jealous person. Oh, envy. That's a, such an uh, uh, ugly emotion, <laughs> you know? So and you would be I, enough, yeah. Yeah, and when I realized, when you know, but this is like, you, you know this in a, in a cognitive way, but you don't feel it, you know? But when yes. I feel like, okay, there's no bad emotions. You have to to let uh, you know. You have to feel the emotions. There's no bad emotions. They're just information. Yeah. But at in the beginning, that's just something that you know in a cognitive way. But but you still feel like ah, oh, and yes. but I'm not an envious person. So yes. it's like denial. You know, I'm not this person. Yeah. And then you realize that you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And and because when I because you're human. Yeah, that's it. When when I started to really. Uh, being aware that yes, I have, and this is not only jealousy. It, 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 jealousy, it's it's really envy. You know, <laughs> I start yeah. to allow myself to feel that, and then yes. if you, and then you can go to like you were saying to the reason why you feel that. Yeah. And um, but but I remember in the beginning it was it was hard for me, and I totally denied it. No, no envy, such a such a ugly emotion. No, such a petty emotion. You know, I'm not an envious person, but but yeah. but yeah, I am. I am and, a and human. One, one thing, yeah, one thing that that sometimes people may think. So so, why would I not be jealous? I mean, wh- isn't that something that is human? Why, why can't I just uh, be jealous of someone else? Why can't I just be comp- be uh, very competitive? And that, and I think there's nothing wrong with that, um, because that's a legitimate question. I mean, so why would we change? You know, why would I want to be a more conscious individual? I mean, in if if I look at my own life. I think this is a this is a very human question, which is okay. So, uh, why should I think about mindfulness? Why should I, th- should I think about a consciousness? Why th- should I think about uh, well being of other people around me? Why should I think about that? At the end of the day, this is an individual game, right? And uh, and and and, uh, and my interpretation for that is that there's nothing wrong with being competitive and. And and if if you want to be uh, just um, a servant of your emotions, you can do so. There's nothing wrong with that. So just look at the more animal and more primitive hormones that circulate in your body, and you're competitive, you're aggressive, you're bitchy. Um, so okay, so let's think. Let, let's imagine. Just assume that to your life. Okay. So I think that the problem with that is that creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress in your body. Um, that's number one. That you, you won't feel you you will, will have a lot of stress in your body. That's number one. Number two, I think you will have more problems having genuine connections. You will have more problems having genuine connections because no matter the person that you are together with whether it's an intimate relationship or a professional relationship they will always disappoint you at some point or in, in the for some moments because this is just a reality right because these people are humans and they don't do this on purpose so i think that uh being conscious and being uh being attentive to the well-being of others is also a way of self-care because at the end of the day you'll benefit from that uh, so, so that is one thing. That's what one one way that I see it. The other way that I see that, uh, which is a, a much more, uh, I would say, conceptual and maybe a little bit more spiritual and more magical, is that I think I, I think that we as humans we are also evolving emotionally. 
And um, I think that there is something more magical that we should connect with. And that magic that you should connect with, and this is very different from person to person, but 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 those feelings of um, of that there's something magical about the world, and that this may be different from many people, but to feel that 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 our existence is in itself magical, I don't think that is compatible with having very primitive and individualist emotions. I don't think that you can get there if you don't feel that you are a part of everything. Because at the end of the day, that, that is what uh, magic really is. You, I, you, you just have the feeling that you are part of everything. And some people have this feeling in psychedelics, like we were talking before we opened the podcast. Well, we shouldn't, th- we, 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 it's not supposed to talk about that, right? But, uh, the people have that experience, but but that experience can be just a walk in the in, in the in the in, in the beach. It can be uh, in the relationship. It can be in the creative act. I mean, so I, I I believe that that search for that those magic moments, those sparkles of magic moments, that we at the end of the day, if you are really attentive in your life, that's what you are really looking for to feel whole with 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 this thing that you call life. I don't think. This is compatible. I really don't think that if you focus too much on being better than the other, being more than the other, or having more than the other, I don't think you... I think that attitude is pulling you away of those magical moments that that, that you feel special about life. This is the way mm-hmm. that I see that. What's yeah, your thoughts to- on that? No, I, tot- I totally agree. I totally agree. I think that you will have a very lonely... Uh, <laughs> A little very lonely life, uh, and you will be disconnected. You will be disconnected first from yourself, and then from from others. I I I really do believe that. Uh, also, I, I I believe in that magic that you that you were uh, talking, and I also believe in the magic of the of the small routine uh, Absolutely, daily yeah. life that that. That we the moment. have, so the yeah. moment. Uh, I think that uh, if you really show uh, uh, a genuine uh, interest in someone else, um, yeah. it's going to be uh, really easy for you to show uh, uh, um, joy for 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 the other person' uh, success. Um, and if you are really present, if you are really connected. Um, just, just that magic that you just that you just mentioned can be even in a in a in a conversation. It can be in, yes, in a smile. A small thing. Be, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. in the small things because we don't do new things every day. We don't go to different uh, places every day. So the if we can if we can find joy in the the daily uh, routines, I think that 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 brings so much colors to to, yeah. to to life and it gives your life a totally completely rich uh, dimension yeah. but 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 again and we go to the to, to the beginning you have to to be able to uh, to start doing some 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 work this does, does yeah. not happen in an automatic way what yeah. happens in an automatic way is the automatic pilot so the routine your brain wants to save energy so it goes uh, you learn yeah. something and then you don't need to to pay attention t- to it so yeah. all the details all the routine not during our day if you don't if we don't pay attention we completely miss it and yeah. because we are wired to the negative for the like you said as a survival mode if you live your day in automatic pilot and completely disconnected and only based on on the negative emotions uh, on the end of the day you only remember what went wrong then like we were saying it can be a very painful journey a very lone lonely uh, uh, journey and especially in a in a profession when you deal with so many people during your day you deal with your patients. You deal with the uh, with your team. Even if you are not, even if you don't need to be a clinic owner to 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 have a to have a team. You have to work with the team if you are a, yeah. a, a dentist. 
and you you risk to uh to live through your through your life and your career and after 20 years you look back and you say okay, yeah what what have i been been doing because it's very what easy for connections that to happen. have i made yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's very easy for that yeah. to to happen and i see it every day and uh, we yeah. talk about this all the time dentists yeah. that blame the patients for everything it's a big huge red flag something how can you yeah. not see that that you are you are completely disconnected from 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 what you are doing um but but it takes it takes training and like you said it's not taught in yeah. in, in in the in the curriculum so i think it's the most the most curious ones, the ones that know, okay, this cannot be just this. You, don't you sometimes talk with colleagues? I, I hear this all the time that they say, okay, yes, I want I want more. to do this because this must be something more in the district. Yeah. This cannot be just this. And that's yeah. where they start discovering the other part of the dentistry that is just not technical. It has all the human connection, all the human skills yeah. or soft skills, if you want to call it soft skills. But... It has, you have to bring to dentistry all the human part because yeah. it's there, but we are mm -hmm. so focused on the technical that we forgot about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. But the, the magic comes from the human connection. The magic comes from you yes. to really feel connected first with yourself. So yes. to, to not be thinking about something completely different, which usually it's wor worry about or thinking about what went wrong or having that negative energy of what's going to be next, the next fire that you're going to have to put out. Um, but you have to be connected first with yourself and then to bring that connection with to through your work and through your communication and through your relations uh, to, 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 to others. And, and for me, uh, I mean... This is my, uh, we, we also talk about this in, in the podcast. But for me, that's the way that dentistry uh, can evolve in a, in a more, in a more uh, positive way, you know, to, to bring the human part uh, uh, into, the, into the equation. Um, and, and this is part of the, of, of the strategies for how you can uh, start training this muscle of, of, of developing this, this genuine desire to see others winning, right? Is to to view other success as part of the of the success of the community. You said that in the in the in the beginning. So to to see it not as a threat to yourself. To, so not to not to to first. I think again develop make make this. You can make this this question to yourself. Pay attention and and start paying attention if you if you how much time you 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 spend comparing yourself uh, and if you compare yourself to others or if you celebrate and when you compare us and when you caught yourself comparing and judging and uh, see if you can can mm -hmm. can identify what's behind that and see if you can start bringing celebration. But um, but I bring really also like the that. sense of community. Yeah, I really like that the uh, celebration over comparison. Uh, I, I was just taking notes here on something that, of course, that first of all we we all need the balance, which is how much should you spend, how much energy should you spend working on yourselves or just uh, helping others, and this is something that you just you just. You just learn to do, I think, uh, uh, and uh, just like everything, I mean, you you cannot just go out in the streets and get, give everything of yourself. And, and and like in the practice, you cannot just give. You cannot pay your associates or what team what all the money that you get, you know, because at the end of the day, you also have to be feel good about yourself, right? You you have to have your well being. You have to have your comfort. But I think. That if that is balance, if if that is balance with the contribution to the team, not only from a, from from a financial point of view, but also from a, a, an example point of view. Um, so, so so balance is really important. Yes, you have to balance these two things, right? 
And uh, an another thing that I was thinking about is that sometimes we may think, oh, okay, but my team doesn't deserve that. I mean, that person doesn't deserve that. Uh, I, I really would like them to win. I really would like to help them, but they don't value me. They don't value the effort that I'm doing for them. Uh, they are not worth it. They, they they don't give a fuck about the practice. They just care about the money. And 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 this is not only common. This is constant. This is really part of the of what we are talking about. This and it, it is exactly in these moments that you better understand the importance of having of of celebrating others' win because. It's easy to want others, it's very easy to want that others win if they treat you very kindly and if they are very good to you. I mean, a dog is always going to be kind to you. So it's easy to love to love dogs, right? It's very easy. But humans, for example, they are not always kind to you. So and I think this is really uh, a key point here. And uh, whenever I talk or think about this, I mean, does this person really deserve that I keep giving myself to help them? Is this really worth it? And that there's this quote from that book, The Way of the Superior Man, from David Day, that we talked about this book many times here. And the, the, the first sentence of the book, which I really like, which is, uh, The Way of the Superior Man is about giving, is about giving yourself to the world, even if no one notices, even if no one cares, even if no one values that. And I think that, um, and sometimes I feel that even with my team, I say, well, I'm actually these guys, uh, that they don't deserve it because they just want um, to leave early and they, and they want to do this and they want to do that. And, and, and these are really small things. I really can't complain, but it's, it's just humans that you have working around you. And sometimes you analyze their behaviors from a perspective of, 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 of your own interest. And at the end of the day, they have their own lives and their own interests. And I think that having, if you try to see the other person's part, it's really important. But even if you really feel that you are, that, that someone else is not being fair to you, um, and I'm not saying about having misbehavior or something that can eventually make you consider um, leaving them or, 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 or firing them. I'm not thinking about that. I'm, I'm saying about some side, sometimes small things. Uh, we want that everybody feels happy all the time around us. We want that everybody talks very nicely to us. But sometimes they just have a bad day. It's nothing serious, just the way that we interpret it, that, that it's just our interpretation of things. And I think that is exactly in those moments those moments where you feel that the person is not or that the person is actually not being nice to you that the person is not uh, thankful enough of what you, for what you have been doing for them uh, especially in a team i think those are the moments that you really have to stop and think and 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 keep giving no matter no matter what is the the, if, if someone else values it or shows value, because I think that the giving part is that you that you have to realize it is the best part of your life. I mean, it's 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 the biggest expression of your own being, which is giving it, and that can be that can assume many forms. Of course, it can be creativity, it can be whatever. But I think that it's very easy for us to to want others to win if they treat us well. But it's especially when we feel that we are not being treated exactly as we should and uh, I, if we feel this is this is something that uh, for example if you are the owner of a practice if you believe that creating good conditions for other people to work with you is 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 the way that you want to do dentistry uh, i think that you should not uh, you should not overanalyze the way that other people treat you because otherwise you become cynic, you become individually. So I think that you have to keep giving. Sometimes, and, and sometimes there's some there's there are things that you can just not tell people to be in a certain way. I mean, you cannot just go to an assistant and say, "Look, I think you should talk to me in a more nicer way. I think you should not always be looking at your phone. I think that you should should uh, 
you should you, you should be more careful in the way in the, in the tone of voice that you use with me i mean all these small things uh it, it's easy to to do that and and but if you if you ask people directly and if you tell this directly to people most of the times i don't think that you will be very successful i think that serving as an example which means basically keep giving and keep creating conditions for people around you to feel better i think this is really the key so um it's not about um it's not about uh telling other people oh actually you should be thankful because i'm helping you in this and that but i think this just being the example without having to do explanations i think and having joy in in in, in being that example i think it's really uh, critical in 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 what we are talking about in in having a genuine desire for having for 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 making others win or for for allowing others to win so i think you should at the end of the day keep giving no matter what and of course for you to be, to keep giving you have to take care of yourself for sure yeah yeah i totally agree and like you said if you um and if you practice what you what what you what you preach, then that will reflect also on the team that you that you that you build. Um, because sometimes in the example that you just mentioned, when you are in a practice and you say, "Ah, oh, but this these people don't deserve, and they are they are only for the money, and they don't do this or do that," sometimes you also have to make the exercise if that's not a reflection of you, if that's not your behavior, also. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because some, sometimes the <laughs> yes the toxic person might be you. And this is yes. and this is this is this yeah. is true. This is true. So um, so and it's very difficult, and it's very difficult for us to see yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not uh, an easy. It's not an easy process. And and sometimes it has to be guided. So you have to be, have help. Yeah, to, outside, in yeah. to see all of, all of these things because you are always going to have a um a, a lot of bias i don't think that sometimes i think it's quite often that you yeah, need yeah. some yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, maybe it's yeah, a book it can be a book for yeah, some people yeah, yeah. Not, but yeah, having yeah. professional help or having some sort of coaching can can be yeah, really yeah, helpful yeah. 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 okay good that was a good, was very that was nice, a nice conversation. Very nice, yeah, very nice conversation. And on very I think subtle, on very subtle conditions of the, the the human condition, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that it's it's not something that we often um, see uh, talked about in in, about, in, yeah. in 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 the history, especially in this um, in this team point of view, like you were like you were saying. Yeah. So for you to be selfless in, in in that way and for you to be able to put yourself in the other person's uh, shoes before reacting and before imposing what you think it's, it's, it should be. Um, but I also think, and just it's my the last thing that I'm going to say, I also think that it has to be with one quality that I think that every dentist think that they have, but sometimes it's not really, which is uh, conscience listening. You know, I think that every dentist, if you talk to every dentist, he will, he will say that he's a good listener to the patient. But I think that they listen in a way just to respond, you know, so they listen yeah. and they are already thinking about what they're going to say, either to the patients or to the assistant or to the team. But conscious listening and active listening is a completely different thing. It's for you first to be able to listen to do an inner listening so to be able to be uh, uh pay attention to what you are feeling that might get in the way for you to really understand the message of the other person yeah. sorry to be able to open this receptive um presence you know for the other to feel really safe to 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 really say what he's he's meant to, yeah, to, to say communication communication is so yeah. It's such uh, it's so but, 
misleading sometimes, yeah, isn't it? But the way, you know, so what you say and what I what I interpret is so different. Completely isn't it? different. Completely, completely different. Completely yeah. different. But you know that I think that in a industry, when we graduate, we have this very active listening, you know, because I think dentists, when they graduate, they know that they have to pay attention to everything that is yeah. being said because it's important for what they are going to, to do. To do. But yeah. then, of course, with the, with the routine, you start just to, to listen to, 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 to reply and to, re, to, to respond and you lose that. But, but for you to, to cultivate this genuine desires, desire to, to, to see others win. I think this is very important yeah. for you, for you to go back to yeah. that to listening, you know, to just the interest of, of just what the other person is, is saying without, without you having to, to say anything, without you having to, yeah. to make up an argument without yeah. anything, just, well, just It's listen. really funny that what you're saying, because I'm going to tell you a story and I think this is a good way to, to end which is exactly what you're saying. There was there was this girl. She's um, she's a, she's she's a girl. She's my age, maybe one year or more older than me. She's a she's um, she's a friend from childhood. We we used to play on the streets. She's a very she's a very nice nice uh, woman. She's very she's a very pretty woman, and she's a childhood friend. And she had some 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 dent, some dental issues, and she had to have like a very extensive rehabilitation that involved implants and stuff. And uh, and I was with her, and I was following her, and I was I was um, basically she was being treated within a course because she had some financial limitations. So I I, I brought her to a course, and I I I brought her there because she also had some medical conditions that she felt a little bit nervous so I went there with her and they did, they did the operation I was I was so I, did, I wasn't seeing patients and I went there with her because she was a childhood friend and I I, I and, and I just felt that I that she, that she would appreciate that and she would be she will feel more confident with that so they did everything and then they placed the provisional uh, uh, bridge and and uh, she was like uh, maybe two or three. Oh, I hate this. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't um, recognize myself with these teeth. I know they are better because she had a very protruded ma mandibular teeth. But she was. This is the way that she saw herself in the mirror. I mean, she had like this big chin. She was a, a girl. She had this big chin. But she, she's a very attractive lady, uh, and she. He says, oh, I hate this. I don't see myself. I'm completely unrecognized. I am, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I don't look like a human. Just, just really, just really bad words. Um, and she was also going to travel with her boyfriend to, to Barcelona in a couple of days. So I don't worry about that. Don't worry about the aesthetics because this, that, this is just provisional. And on the 10th day, if people don't like it, we change it so that you are don't need to you, you wear the provisionals that you don't like for for six months. And th th this is WhatsApp all through WhatsApp after the surgery. And I was like, ah, fuck. I mean, I was so cool with her. We made her a special price. I brought her there, and she's complaining about this. You know, she's saying that this and that and that. And and my first reaction would be to say, look, uh, uh. You are overreacting. You are just you are just uh, you are just being bitchy about this. You are overreacting. So please behave. That would be my first. You know, just just stop bitching about that. I mean, look what you wanted. You wanted to have what you wanted to be without teeth. Don't don't you value this? And then I just realized I was like, hey, just, this this is perfectly normal. I mean, she's not a dentist. This is the way she is. I mean, um. She she doesn't have a dental degree to do understand what's going on, and yes, the balance that you have to you have to answer and say, look, no, no, you are not this figure. We will sort it out. Don't worry about that. The only thing that we are concerned about is for the next six months to see if the implants go okay. But then for the aesthetics, just calm down. You'll be fine. Don't worry. Uh, we'll change everything. Um, so you are assertive in a way, but you are. 
you are not judging her. Empathetic. Yes. And uh, and it's funny because we went to the that then she, we she booked the appointment. We removed the stitches and and then we took the the venture to the lab just to change everything to say to to be exactly with uh, with very protruded mandibular teeth at least for a few months. And she, and uh, and she was like, "Oh, but 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 please tell me that everything is is everything okay?" And I says, "Oh yes, everything is okay. This is just a stat. This is just fine." And she just she placed her hands in my arm and says. Oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> Can't you see? <laughs> and I was about to explode, you know. So the thing is that sometimes the way that the way that people express their needs is really mysterious and and it's highly individual, isn't it? And and I think it, that and it can time, trigger you, huh? and, and it can trigger. You. That that's it. That's the point. It can trigger like. I mean, she should be thankful to me. I wasted the full Saturday morning. I went to take her to the court just because she's a childhood friend. Now she's telling me she's much better now because she had this big chin. She's much better now. She's bitching about she's having normal teeth. What the fuck is she talking about? It's It looks like, look, you were ugly. Now you are beautiful. Why are you bitching about this? And at the end of the day, it's just like the way that people express themselves is is very different you know uh some people just they, they just say the things that they do because they just try to make a point they just want to to be heard and sometimes they exaggerate for your own standards right and of course that you have to be assertive right you have to be confident and 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 that's that was exactly what she was looking for she was just looking and we talked about this many times she was just looking for someone that had a masculine energy that would be assertive and calm and just calm her down and not even be more bitchy than she was being. Do you understand? And it's very easy to, just very easy to to, to mm -hmm. follow that mm -hmm. and to be triggered mm -hmm. to that. To just and, react. And it just said, look, she placed my, head, my hands in my cell. Oh, ah, that was, thank you. That was exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> I was like. No, like imagine if I, and I think this, some of these things only, only come with experience, you know, some of these things only, on, on, only come with experience and, and with intentional work, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. with intentional mm -hmm. work. But also if you are very tired and if you work in autopilot mode, it's very difficult to have this, um, you are completely this reactive. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you work in a reactive, uh, you work in a reactive way, and you are triggered, and you are not aware of of, of anything. Yeah. So it's like the, what I always say: the the stress doesn't come from from what the patient says; it comes from the way that you react to what the yeah. the patient says. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think yeah. that that, uh, that uh, uh, an important message of of, of today's podcast of uh, training yourself. To to be genuinely happy for other people's victories, or uh, actually, what was the title? Something like that, right? Developing the, a genuine desire to see others yeah, win. Developing a genuine desire to see others win. I would add to the subtitle that celebration over comparison. I think it's a very very nice mantra. Uh, so I, I think that. Thinking about these things and genuinely genuinely developing. Uh, um, a desire to see people around you win. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a, a work in progress and, and no matter the age that you are, I think you should start to think about this on a more regular basis and ideally on a more daily basis because at the end of the day, life is made of connections, isn't it? And there's nothing that you can achieve alone. And even if you achieve a huge, uh, a, a huge success alone, if you don't have anyone to share it with and if you... If if that was not made with bringing others up with you during that su success, at the end of the day, it, it's completely meaningless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just uh, just to finish, if if uh, if he, if this that we just talked about, if you are curious to know more, just yes, start, to our start. course. Yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it because we we it, we talked a lot about we talk a lot we about talk this. A I mean, a non-reactivity yeah. is a superpower in the industry. Emotional intelligence is a superpower in the industry. 
So yeah. if you want to develop the, the, the human skills that we were talking about, that's, that's our course. So join us, join us in Cyber's next edition. It will be in, uh, in October 3, 4, October. and 5 of October, Conscious yeah. Leadership and Industry. And we'll see you there. Andre, thank you. It was a nice conversation. Thank you so much for the therapy session. I was missing these. <laughs> bye bye. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the Soft Spice podcast. We would love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Please leave a comment or connect with us on social media. Your comments and messages will help us to know you and your, in our profession a little bit better so that we can offer real value in return. And if you like it, please subscribe. If you want to learn how to be a leader and drive change in the industry, take a look at our Conscience Leadership course at softbites.online.